Actually, no, 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 take this. Bring it to the green room, ask one of them Chico boys that came to the hotel if they could roll a blunt for us. Take a roll of blunt for me. So introduce yourself, let people know a little bit about you. All right, uh, I mean, uh, lift the camera. Okay, all right. It was good on Wi-Fi's funeral. I'm from Palm Beach County, Florida. And uh, a lot of people know me from my music. Like, I, I don't really know how else to explain it. Um, I'm not one of these like little gimmick rappers or like, I don't know, I just, I just rap. People know who I am. <laughs> So now, you're back in Houston? Yeah. What are people going to expect when they see you perform tonight? I mean, you know, we're going <clears> to <throat> turn out tonight, you know what I mean? I've been waiting to come to Texas for like a minute now. And like, um, there's always like good vibes whenever I'm out in Texas, man. Like when we started off in Dallas, from Austin to San Antonio, now that we're in Houston. You know, I fuck with it heavy, I fuck with, with Texas heavy. Like real heavy. So what's like one thing that like makes you love Love City? Well, I mean, I think I, I really, I was telling somebody like, I appreciate y'all culture more than anything. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 the way how the cities are built are nice. You know what I mean? Like even y'all hoods look nice. It's crazy. You know what I mean? But like fucking the whole culture behind Houston and like Chop the Screw music and even like with Sip and Lean and all that shit, bro. Like, it's an actual, like, culture, and you don't see that shit a lot, and especially in a fucking, like, state at that. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to get that, like, authentic feel when you touch down somewhere and you're like, damn, I've never been here before. Like, it's a different vibe. And how, uh, you mentioned Chop Screw music. How did DJ Screw uh, influence you directly? Um, well, I'd been listening to Screw Tapes for about, like, two years. And um, I had first found out about DJ Screw through Drake. Honestly, like, as sad as that sounds, like, I wouldn't want to, like, disrespect anybody that's into the whole culture of how I got put on a DJ Screw, but that's how I did. Because he had did a remix to the uh, June 27th. And then <laughs> I found out about it, and I just liked the beat so much. I was like, bro, who made the beat? It said DJ Screw. So I just looked up the song, and then I heard fucking everybody else rapping on it from him. Fucking screwed up click, and I was like, yeah. Fought with this shit and I just kept listening and kept listening and kept listening and kept listening. And I just fought with it like real heavy. Right, so let's get to where you're from though. So you like, you're coming out of Florida and that music scene has been exploding. Like, how does it feel to be a part of that? Be one of the people spearheading that movement? Um, you know, it, it, that's kind of like a hard question to like answer. Cause like, I could offend. A lot of people answering that question because like you know I don't really I love the fact that I'm from Florida because like it's everything that I ever wanted in the state and everything that I ever wanted in the city and everything like that you know what I mean but I feel like within that whole scene I just don't fit in it you know what I mean like I just feel like not even on some like I'm different shit or like I'm on some other shit but it's just like certain people that are in that scene you know what I mean like it just fits more in their lane and it just makes more sense for like their career and how they want to push themselves as an artist, you know what I mean? I have other plans. Like I want to actually do like some some like longevity shit. And I'm not saying that other Florida rappers can't do that, but you know with the scene, it comes and it goes, you know what I mean? So unless like you really soak it up, but you know what I mean? I don't want to just be a part of a scene. I want to be something like everlasting, you know what I mean? Like Bigger than Florida in a sense. I want to always put on for Palm Beach County and put on for Florida forever, but I don't want to just be boxed in as just like a, a, a up and coming, rising like South Florida artist. You know what I mean? Because it's like, damn, man, like you couldn't give me the time and credit to actually listen to my shit, not knowing the fact that I'm from Florida and let me know if you fuck with me or not. So, yeah, but I, but I like it's cool though. You know what I mean? To, to have people from my state and to have everybody from my city like give me certain respect. Everybody gonna hate on you regardless, you know what I mean? But for people to give me like, you know, respect and people to treat me with respect in the way how I treat others with respect, it's just, it's just all good vibes and it makes you feel like you're doing something positive, you know what I mean? Cause like, you see so much bad shit going on in the world, you don't know what the fuck is good for anybody anymore. So I'm just glad that making music and being where I'm from is helping my city and my state feel good about themselves and feel like they can have another outlet to do shit. 
and you, you don't have to answer this it's up mm. to you but like what is something that you see maybe in a year two years five years that'll let you know you're on the right path to becoming something more than just you know someone that's just you know fits the box damn that's a really good question um honestly man like not even like when I'm able to hold my own because I feel like I as an artist can hold my own, but like when you hear about me and you get multiple reactions and not just one, that's when I know that I'm actually like, I'm not just doing this. I'm not on a wave or I'm not just a part of this little internet scene or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people have it like fucked up and think that I'm just like doing this and I'm doing that. I'm like, nah, bro, like I wanna actually do shit that lasts long in this music shit, you know what I mean? So when I see that I can get a react, three different types of reactions from people all in one like area, if I can make people hate me, love me, and fucking just wanna talk about me for no reason, then I mean, obviously I'm on the right path, honestly. So yeah, I guess that's the answer to your question. And then to get into the music, which is what people are going to be reacting to, what inspired your sound? Found, sound has like a kind of a dark direction. It's just real life experiences. You know what I mean? Like it's just uh, real life shit that I've gone through. A lot of people um, misunderstand a lot of shit that I say and try to make it seem like I'm trying to influence other to do things. But it's like I'm not trying to influence your child or you as a person to do something that you hear me talking about on my music, bro. I'm literally, my music is like an open like diary. It's like an open journal, bro. It's me telling you about my life. It's like literally getting a book and flipping the chapters. You know what I mean? Seeing visuals like, like through words and through like your head, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, pretty much like, yeah, I like that. It's not even that that's a hard question to answer. That shit's just like, I get asked that question so many times and not even like to like, I'm not on an offensive shit that is just like, I would think man, that like a lot of people wouldn't take it so literal. You know what I mean? And I think that's a lot of things that people do nowadays with music. They take everything that a person says like so literal. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna be real with you. Like a lot of people not really on that shit. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying here claiming that I am or that I'm doing this or I'm doing that, but whatever you hear in my music, I'm not here glorifying it, bro. I'm telling you what the fuck I've been through, bro, because I done been through some shit. Point blank, period, bro. I'm just telling my story. And if a person don't like what I'm saying in my story, go find another book to read. That's how I look at it, you know what I mean? So why do you think people don't like, they don't get that? Like, why don't you think uh, they don't make that connection? That's just like you speaking on what you've been through, not necessarily something you're trying to because people don't got the attention spans to actually sit down and listen to something nowadays, man. Like, on some real shit, bro, like, everybody wants, and, per, and, and a great preference that I could put this, everybody wants fast food. They want something that they could just eat, okay, and then whenever I feel like it, I could come back to it, and I know it's gonna always be there, and it's gonna keep coming every single time that I come. As opposed to them eating, like, a well, like cook steak, you feel me? It takes time to make a good fucking steak, you know what I mean? But when you eat that shit, it's like, it's so worth it that you're just like, damn bro, I'm so glad that I took the time to actually like do this instead of eat this fast food. And that's how music is. It's so like rapid and fast that it's like people are eating fast food in a sense and they're like, man, what the fuck? Like I need a new mixtape every three months, but it's like, bro, like no human being in this world has the brain power for that. You know what I mean? and especially somebody that's trying to actually give you an album that's worth listening to. Like when I make an album, I personally want somebody to be like, yo, I can still see myself listening to this album three years from now. You know what I mean? Like fuck a trend, fuck away, fuck all that shit. And, I, and that's why I feel like people are like that, bro, because people are so used to just, all right, all right, I need this, I need that, I can get this mixtape, I can do this. And it's, the, and it, it, it's not to blame the internet because without the internet, shit wouldn't be how it is, but it's like the, 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 the demand is, Rapid, and I'm gonna be real with you. Like fucking Van Gogh isn't painting like masterpieces in like every fucking three milliseconds of the day, my nigga. You feel me? That's all true, man. I'm trying not to talk, but I'm like, yeah, you're making points, bro. Yeah, like, and I never, and people always think that come at it at a negative effect. It's like, nah, bro. Like, I just really want 
my fans to understand and I want to grow with my fans so much that I want them to mature with me, you know what I mean? Because so many of these fucking rappers are feeding you bullshit and it's so great that us as a generation, we're ignorant. But it's like with that ignorance, we could turn it into something positive. Nobody said that you had to be ignorant and negative. But that's what a lot of people forget. They think, oh, if I'm ignorant as fuck and I'm this and that and I'm representing this, this is it. I'm talking about real life shit. It's like, bro, you could talk about real life shit and then help somebody fucking with their life or turn their life around or look at other alternates. Like all my niggas that do dumb shit, bro, I literally show them like, all right, look, you could do this. You could do that. Get off of this. Don't do that. Why are you addicted to this? Let me show you. You can make some money real quick doing that. Shit that the average fucking human being in society doesn't even show you. But they rather just promote all the violence and shit. And I ain't no fucking positive, like, person in any form of way of, like, being like, oh, we got to do this for the community and everything like that. But it's like, bro, these kids is listening, dog. And people don't get that. Like, these kids is listening, bro. Like, there are people 12 years old listening to what the fuck we are saying. And if we don't take that into any form of consideration, shit gonna get real crazy. People, because niggas already think that it's crazy as it is, but shit gonna get real crazy. I talk about crazy shit in my music. I ain't gonna sit here and flag like I don't, but you know what I mean? I'm trying to mature from that. I don't want to just stay stuck on that. Because I, like, you know what I mean? Like, life goes on, bro. One last question, and then we can get yeah. some lighter. No, I don't care. It doesn't matter, bro. I, okay. be t- I, I talk. It don't matter. Okay, cool, cool. But um, what is one thing you want to tell uh, the people that listen to your fans or someone that's trying to get to know you? Like, what is one thing you want to tell them to follow, I guess? Not follow, but like, don't, one piece of advice. One piece of advice that I definitely want to give to, like, my fans is don't ever let nobody tell you that you can't do shit in life in any form of way. Don't ever let nobody sit here and tell you, like, well, you said you want to be a fucking producer, but you haven't even made any beats yet, or you haven't did this, or you haven't did that to actually do it. As long as you know what the fuck you want to do with your life, and you know exactly what path you're going, and you fought, you're doing everything in a positive heart, and you know you're not doing anything in any negative aspect, bro, like, you good. It's not always about like being a doctor or being this. Although, you know, it'd be it'd be a blessing to have more of those too, you feel me? Like, no, no, no credibility taken from people that actually want to do that with their life as well. You know what I mean? But don't let somebody tell you that you have to be like an average statistic or you gotta think from a nine to five person standpoint to actually do what the fuck you wanna do. Cause I never worked a job a day in my life. So let's get to one of the things that people may criticize you or may judge you for. Um, just yeah. What is it? What inspires like the tattoos, the style that you have, the look? Because people, <laughs> people they hear one thing and they see another, but you know, it's Um, I basically started getting all these tattoos. Cause it's like, man, like this shit is my life, bro. You know what I mean? Like this, I, I really like, I, I live for this music shit, man. Like I, this is really all I want to do in my life. I want to venture off to bigger and better things as I get older, but it's like, at, right now, bro, this is all I'm focused on. Nothing else, there's no plan B. You know what I mean? So like, a lot of my tattoos are like a representation of like pain as well. Like I got die tattooed right here. And then I got the devil's hand like crossed like that cause it's like crossed my heart, hope to die. And then I got triple seven on me cause that's God's number. So I kind of feel in a sense, feel protected at all times. Wi-Fi bars is because like this is like the tattoo that motivated me that this is I need that this is the shit that I need to do in my life for real. Rich life because it's my label. Life after death because when I overdose for the second time like I was supposed to be dead. I'm gonna be real. You know what I mean? So yeah. Do you mind speaking on that Oh yeah I mean like you know when you get into a mindset a really dark positive, like not dark positive, a really dark negative mindset. And you're like, you don't really got that many people to depend on because you don't, you, you're still learning as a person to like cater for yourself or like, you know what I mean? Like teach yourself how to just survive on your own. It's hard, you know what I mean? And some people can rise to the aspect and achieve it. And some people learn a little longer than others, you know what I mean? And I was one of those people that 
it took me a minute to actually get on my feet, you feel me? And when I was, when I fell, I fell down like really hard and I depended on drugs, you feel me? Cause I was already doing other dumb shit. And yeah, bro, like, you know what I mean? So that shit happened, whatever, whatever. But I got back up, you feel me? I got my dick out the dirt and I said, fuck that shit. Cause you know what I mean? That shit ain't important as money is. Get to the visuals though, because that's one of the biggest things that was standing out for you. Yeah. So what is your creative process when it comes to the music videos? Well, I mean, uh, music videos, I really try to go off of like a, 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 a thought that it'll be like a sketch in my head. It's not even necessarily I'll see it in like a real life form. It'll be like a drawing and like of how I see a music video. And then I try to just bring that drawing to like real life, you know what I mean? Um, but what a lot of people don't, don't, don't know is that Black Heart Revenge, for all the music videos, other than Love the Feeling, for all the music videos, I tried to like really give it like the theme of like Max Payne, the video game. Like just the, 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 the colors, the look, you know what I mean? Because with Black Heart Revenge, people don't know is that the theme behind Black Heart Revenge is Max Payne, the second one. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much what we do as far as music videos go. And then Nas puts his like, 100% creativity into it and just gives it his all. So like when we just mesh the both of our minds together, it just it comes out great. You know what I mean? I love working with Nas. It's gonna sound like a little bit of a random question, but what was it about Max Payne that like made you want to incorporate that into the music video? Cause it's like it's like you know what I mean? Like Max Payne, he was a good guy, but it's like he got fucked, got fucked over it, like so many times. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a revenge in a sense, and like his within all the shit that he went through, he grew like a black heart. So when I was playing the game, I was like, damn, man. Like, I came up with the name when I was in the hospital, but then when I was playing the game, I was like, damn, bro, for real, it's like a Black Heart Revenge. So then I was like, oh shit, that's what I'm gonna call the tape, Black Heart Revenge. Yeah, what is, like, let's say three things that mm -hmm. you want people to get from that tape? Say one thing, say that one more time? My bad. There what you what go. Is, like, three things that you want people to understand from that tape? If you had a name, like, I want them to under, I want them, I would want them to understand the story behind it, if they could actually sit down and listen to it from start to finish. I would want them to understand that through that, life goes on, although a lot of trials and tribulations are gonna be in front of you. And I would also want them to learn that, like, it's okay to be the type of person that you are. You know what I mean? If you know that you're not that type of person that does a lot of evil spirited shit, you know what I mean? It's okay to be like some positive in your life and it's okay to actually like give back to people. That's one thing that I had like a lot of hard time like accepting in my life was like actually like taking it in like some nigga being like, hey bro, that shit snap. I'll just be like, bro, don't fucking talk to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, bro, that's what I would really want them to learn to come clean. Yo, what's good? Shout out SMP, shout out H Town, he's in Texas, you already know how you're rocking for a Black Heart Revenge tour. Ski Mask Slunk, God Dang Towers, Waffle Funeral, and shit, nigga.